everyone plans for their marriage to end, but if it does, you want to make sure you're protected financially. You or your partner may be entitled to spousal support. Joining us this morning to tell us more is family lawyer Stuart Zuckerman. Good morning, Stuart. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So give us a sense, who is entitled to spousal support, uh, also known as alimony? Is it limited to partners who've been officially married? Uh, no, it applies to both married couples and common law couples. So if you're together for two years or more and unmarried, you can, and then you separate, uh, spouses in that situation can also apply for spousal support. So how long uh, do they usually get the spousal support for? So spousal support uh, usually uh, lasts for a period of between half of the length of the relationship to the full length of the relationship or more. So there's something called the rule of 65. If the age of the recipient of support plus the number of years of marriage or the, how long the relationship lasted equals or exceeds 65, then the spousal support is presumed to be lifetime support until retirement. Hmm. And how is it calculated? So it's typically, spousal support is a monthly payment uh, from the higher income earner to the lower income earner, and it's usually based on the difference of the party's annual incomes uh, and the length of the relationship. So a rough rule of thumb would be that the amount of support paid annually equals 2% of the difference of the party's annual incomes multiplied by the number of years they've been together. So if you've been together for 15 years, multiply that by 2%, and then you get 30% of the difference in each person's annual income, and the higher income earner would pay that amount on a monthly basis to the lower income earner. And it's taxable income to the recipient, and it's tax deductible to the payor. And, and the, whole, the whole idea of support is that when, when couples separate, they should both suffer the same uh, reduction in lifestyle, because prior to separation, they lived together on sharing their incomes and when they separate they now uh, are living in separate households and and it shouldn't be that one person suffers a great diminution in lifestyle and the other person only suffers a small amount so by equalizing their incomes they both suffer the same reduction in lifestyle right I, I know a lot of couples have a difficult time talking about finances is this the kind of conversation that couples should have before they get married well, it's a good idea uh, uh, anytime you're getting married to talk about a potential cohabitation or marriage agreement that deals with not only issues of spousal support, but how your assets may be divided uh, when you separate. So it, it's, and then you have a, an insurance policy in effect because you have a, a contract or an agreement that specifically addresses how you're going to deal with spousal support or property division or debt division uh, in, in the event that you separate. So, I mean, people can lose their job, they can change their jobs, income can go up or down. Does spousal support change in that regard? Yeah. Yeah, anytime there is a material change in circumstance or an unforeseen uh, or radical change in circumstance, the court can open up a prior agreement or an order for support and vary it upwards or downwards to reflect the changes uh, in incomes of the party. So if someone is ordered to pay $1,500 a month in spousal support based on their income at you know, $60,000 a year and then a year later, uh, they lose their job or they get a, a different job at a lower pay, they can go to court or negotiate for a lower monthly support uh, to reflect, again, it would reflect the difference in the party's annual incomes. Mm -hmm. Does spousal support have to be negotiated in court? No, uh, it, and obviously it's preferable to negotiate it outside of court and work out a deal because going to court is expensive and stressful. But, it, you know, oftentimes people are resistant or just won't agree to pay support. And then you have to go to court to get a court order to enforce the right to collect support. A lot of people may not know what they're entitled to. Stuart, thanks, thanks for joining us this morning and clearing up some of that. My pleasure. Thanks.